Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons of Fifth Edition, and the fact that Chloe Zhao's Eter Marvel Eternals went rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, and what it means for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition and for the Dungeons and Dragons community, for Dungeons and Dragons Mat for Dungeon Masters and for Dungeon Players Fifth Edition Dungeon Masters and Fifth Edition Dungeon Players. It's it's big news, so, and I think we need to pay attention because this is important to Dungeons and Dragons. All right, so let me determine. Let me define all the terms. So, um, who's Chloe? All right, so what's Mar Marvel? Is the Marvel the MCU? The Marvel Cinematic Universe is, without exception, the most uh, the most successful intellectual property in the history of humanity. Like it has crushed everything. The MCU has crushed Star Wars. It's crushed Harry Potter. It's crushed Transformers. It's crushed Star Trek. Like, it's crushed F not, you know, Fast and Furious series. Nothing stands against it. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is the template for big screen success today. Okay? Nothing even comes close. Right? So, the MCU's been chugging along, right? Well, Endgame was a real divider, right? Like, there was a question of, hey... Can the MCU survive Marvel Endgame, right? Which was the ending of a massive story. And it was it was a succinct ending. And you're kind of like, is that the end of the MCU? And I think that question is still being asked today. Is the MCU over? I'm definitely asking that, right? I've watched everything. I'm all caught up on the MCU even after Endgame. So, I've you know, uh, Wanda Vision being drug over glass. Uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, not fun. Um, what if? Amazing, right? Really fantastic. Black Widow, great movie five years ago. Not great year. Not a great movie in 2021, right? Um, you know, I really didn't like. I just don't care about a movie about a character you just killed in the movie. Like it's you know, it doesn't make sense, right? It didn't make any sense. Um, and then uh, oh, Shang Chi fantastic movie by every metric it looks like it will never ever receive a sequel and that character will probably never be in the MCU again even though it crushed Black Widow right you know just outperformed it in every way right so like and then there's all this talk of like uh you know Black Widow will be back and Shang-Chi won't what what sense of, so the MCU is this huge problem so now we get to Marvel Eternals right and so Marvel Eternals is a lot of money. It's a lot of investment. It's the, supposed to carry the franchise forward. So they did something really unusual. And they ha they hired an art house director. Chloe, Jean Chloe Zhao is an amazing art house director. Just really, really powerful. Uh, you know, very good art house director. I watched a movie she just made called Nomad. It won an Oscar. I think it won several Oscars. And Chloe Zhao is an has an she's an Oscar award winning director, right? And so basically, Marvel Eternals was supposed to do a whole bunch of things, right? It was supposed to bring a powerful new director into uh, the Marvel MCU. It was and it was also supposed to be one of the most woke um, entries in the MCU, right? And and people were and woke and successful like people were going to respond to this wokeness right well i think they made a critical misstep and one of the things they did is it came out before the movies is and you know that spoilers for marvel eternals um that the eternals is supposed to be out the gods of marvel well there are no well guess what brah, brah, brah. there are no gods in marvel it's just a bunch of toasters it's robots who cares right i don't care about toasters right there's a hierarchy to life People care about people. People care about animals less than they care about people. People care about things less than they care about people, less than they care about animals, less than they care about virtually anything, right? Like, people, we have to care about people. We are people. Like, it's important that we care about people. Animals, it's great if we care about them. We also eat them, right? So there's a little bit of a, like, mm, where are we on animals? There's a question there, right? Things... We throw things in the trash. Like, we use them. We destroy them. Like, you know, if you're calling people to care deeply about things, people ain't going to care, right? And that's the issue is, and I think that's why Chloe Zhao's Marvel Eternals went rotten. Now, I don't think it stayed rotten. It went, like, it was at 59%. 
and then they, you know, somebody got on the, you know, and, and basically then it bounced up to 60 and like, but if you got a 50, if you go rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, that's never good, right? Like, and then even if you're like, oh, well, he escaped rotten, that ain't great news either. Like, you should have never been there to begin with, right? Like, so Chloe Zhao's Mavaro Eternal, before it comes out, goes rotten, rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. That's bad. That is very bad, right? So what do we do with this as Dungeon Masters and Dungeon Players, okay? Well, as Dungeon Masters, it's important. This is the issue, right? Who is our game for, right? So basically, one of the problems that we had is we brought in an art house director into a mainstream franchise. MCU is mainstream, right? You don't make billion, one movie, one movie in the MCU like cracked the roof off of the off of the earnings statement and I, I can never I think Mar uh, MCU and Titanic are fighting for most you know most number one film of all time Marvel MCU uh, Marvel Endgame made 2.9 million dollars that's like it's almost three billion dollars that's incredible right it's just like that's like what some studios make in a single year on a single movie like it's just astonishing how high that number is right and now, and so, and that's mainstream. You don't get that with art house films. You just don't, right? So Marvel was betting that this art house director could bring in mainstream media, right? And it totally makes sense. Chloe Zhao is a very smart person. She was like, okay, I can make this. But it was a, it was a complete failure. Like she's an art house director saying people will care about things, right? So what we as Dungeon Master have to do is we have to be very careful, right? Are we attracting more me's, right? I think most dungeon masters are the macro level, 51% level. I know there are exceptions to this, but the macro level dungeon master is a coastal elite. Highly educated, highly charismatic, highly confident, highly intelligent, okay? And we're attracting more me's, but it's a mistake, okay? Like, we need to attract the masses. We need to attract mainstream players, right? Players who own Ford F-150s eat cheeseburgers and not um, hummus, right? And are not, like, vegetarians. Like, you know, like, it's it's important, right? And and more and more, we're getting this, you know, a feat um, podcast audience that is super, you know, like, that would be highly likely to make artisanal pickles. And it's bad, like, because it keeps us small, Right? And so we ha we cannot make the same mistake Chloe Zhao made, right? We can't keep creating these uh, games, uh, the these campaigns, these Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition campaigns that are highly attractive to the podcast crowd: rich, educated, charismatic, confident, um, super intelligent. We need mass appeal to mass to mainstream players, right? Like players who know what an airsoft gun is you know like it just it's just we can't keep doing this and so there's a powerful lesson for every dungeon master out there don't make this special podcast brew right like we really need to understand ourselves and say i've got to sacrifice some of the things i want in this game so that my podcast friend is going to show up and play and my neighbor down the block who has a Ford F-150, eats cheeseburgers, and, um, you know, and watches football, has a chance of playing Dungeons and Dragons, right? It's really, really important, okay? And um, and I will tell you right now, like, how do we do that? I'm not 100% sold on how we do that um, because it, it's going to be challenging. It means we need to change ourselves. We need to have a very, very hyper awareness of our, we need to have hyper self-awareness. Like we need to know how like eccentric we are and start to pull it back and then learn some of the things that will actually attract um, mainstream players. And one one of them is we've got to get the page count on down on Dungeons and Dragons. Like I keep saying Dungeons and Dragons for highly educated people. That is un, that is undebatable at the macro level, right? We have 7,000 pages of canon in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. 7,000 pages of canon. That's incredible. That's got to get reduced down, you know, massively. Because right? we just, if you keep 7,000 pages of canon, you're never going to get anything but highly, you're, you're, you're never going to change the macro shape 
of your audience, which is highly educated, highly charismatic, highly confident, highly intelligent, which is a small number of Americans. You just aren't going to get there, right? So all that's my opinion. What do you think? Uh, were you excited about Eternals and now you're not just like me because I'm like, I'm not going to watch a movie about toasters whacking demons. I just, I'm not interested in that. Uh, or, and what do you think of this idea of understanding who we are and starting to change uh, how we build our campaigns to attract mass appeal, mass mainstream players? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking, subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.